this podcast is aimed at older audiences so if you're not 18 or plus this is not for you if you happen to still watch it then that is on your own head be it and we take no responsibility for any of the things that you will hear during this podcast it is is. a well 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 it's it's uh an ongoing pattern of inconsistency but hell that's the way we're going to do things it happens when it happens at least we're consistently inconsistent. Exactly. So there is okay, some we're doing it consistent. Live. Yeah, exactly. Um, you will hear me sniffle a lot recently today. Um, allergies are a pain in my backside. I have taken the meds to prevent that, but we'll see how well they do. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since the last session. I've recently started therapy, and I think my therapist is going to have a fucking field day when she learns about how this campaign has a lot of death involved. (laughs) So did I. It's been great. Uh, My next session is Tuesday. I think mine is Thursday. Ah. Scheduling's a bitch. (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm hoping for it to be the same day every week. Because then that works for me. I can plan around that. Um, but yeah. So I had some ideas whilst I messaged Ash earlier about, do you want some law about the hand of glory? And immediately as I was typing the question, a gajillion ideas came forward as some memory from actually researching it. So did you actually know that the Hand of Glory was a real item, IRL? Although it didn't have the same, naturally, it didn't have the same effect that you have got, that you have gotten. It was actually uh, a person's dead hand and the candle was made out of human fat. And Gross. it was yeah. that, you basically have that, and the candle was on the middle finger. Just like that. It was a short, stumpy thing. Who the fuck? I opened my phone and didn't realize TikTok was open because I was trying to make an email go away. Um, it actually had the ability a, it was crafted by a witch, and B, it had the ability to hush everybody within its radius. Cone of silence, if you will. Yeah. It, it was pretty gross. I actually saw some pictures, and it was like, that's kind of fucked up. I like it. <laughs> and then, of course, there is the, uh, the, the originals version. And then there's my version, which was, I, I've been told was a stroke of genius, and I still need to do the TikTok on that. I've been going ham with other things, so I'm allowed to slack off on some. Uh, but welcome to another Three and a Half Men podcast. God damn. It feels good to say it every time it happens, because it's like, yay, we get to play D&D. And I get to mentally traumatize my players further. There was also a hand of glory in the Harry Potter universe. It's mentioned a couple of different times in Borgin and Burke's of Diagon Alley. That was right. It was... And we actually saw that in the movies as well. Yep. It did something dramatically different from all of the other variations as well. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. A hand of glory is a dark artifact. A shriveled hand which gives candlelight to only the holder. Mm-hmm. So when they cast darkness in, in that black inky cloud, the only person that could see was Malfoy, who was holding the hand of glory. So, as per use, um, we go through the previous session's notes as a recap for this session. 
<clears throat> DM clears throat. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> That's what she said. Hey! Speaking of that's what she said, I do believe I actually uploaded some scheduled to upload uh, some more OnlyFans content. So if you haven't yet done so, feel free and click the link in the comments below, in the description below, the comments is what you do, and, and, and go, go listen to some rather profane, dirty, and lewd commentary. That is too hot for YouTube. <laughs> innocent. Mm hmm. I, I, I refer to No Man Bun. <laughs> no Man Bun. <laughs> anyway, overnight happenings. Beck nosies about the cavernous area, asks Goliath about the shrooms. He has an unsatisfactory answer and takes his curiosity elsewhere. He finally notices the giant lava fall in the room and figures out this is the forge. Apparently, the lava comes from a nearby volcano, fire top mountain, not fire pot. You're fired. You're rehired. Um, oh. <laughs> Question mark. Still not satisfied. He goes to harangue a 400 year old dwarf. After a demonstration of his golem-making skills, Beck finds out there has to be a final war when they take back the kingdom from Orcus. Orpheus wakes up and steps out of his body, noticing the halfling spooning his sleeping form. He then notices his death standing next to him. They have a brief conversation about physics and astral physics, and the dumb boy tries death's patience a few times over. Death walks Orpheus to another place entirely. Clearly having teleported, he explains that Orpheus is to go in the house and decide whether the person who's inside is ready to die. Orpheus turns on Death and asks him why he came Orpheus's fiancée. Death says that he has no control over what others do. He did come for the fiancée, but not by his choice or doing. He gives Orpheus the gift. The Hand of Glory. Mystic candle held by a human hand infused with the fiancée's blood. Lighting the candle will show the fiancé for as long as the flame burns. As long as the wick lasts, five charges, re regaining 1d4 minus 2 at the end of every seven days. Once the candle has burned out, the owner must let go of the dead. If they haven't let go, they become the next candle. Brackets, mad props to the fellow DMs for this homebrew item. That's wicked cool. A. Orpheus enters the house and immediately takes two points of psychic damage from a shriek. A white shroudy form passes through Orpheus's form and makes his hair stand on end, gives him the shivers. He proceeds to the nearest open door. He sees a very small child's bedroom full of frilly lace, pink walls, stuffies, the whole lot. A small form lays wasting away in the bed, colourless and clearly unwell. She's holding a black unicorn stuffy. He kneels beside the bed and puts his hand on hers. He says, it's okay, you're not alone. The house around them violently vibrates on a small twitch in the little one. He continues to try and console the little one. Death shows up to observe. He says, not everyone deserves to die. If they die, who helps the world? He vanishes. Orpheus continues to soothe the child and the house stops shaking. And the white shrouded form comes back over the bed. He looks up and recognizes the spirit of his fiancée. Cue, tears. His fiancée slams into Orpheus, body, hang, hang, body and hangs out, melding souls. He whispers, uh, Yuri, give me strength in response. He feels a strong, warm emotion and clear sense that his fiancée's soul act was actually reborn into this body and is not yet ready to die. Again. Orpheus leans forward and whispers to the girl in the bed, it's time to go. He notices there is a string-like connection between his hand and her soul. He picks up the string. After a few minutes, he tugs at the string, trying to break it. Nothing happens. He tries again. Nothing. He can't bring himself to do it. Yuri's soul vanishes, and he reflexively drops the string. Death's hand 
on his shoulder jolts him out of his trance. Tears streaming down his face, he says, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Death transports them outside of the house to a table. He dressed formally. He's dressed formally again and is drinking tea. Orpheus remembers his lesson from last time and asks to join him for tea. What did we learn? I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Death explains that Orpheus didn't fail. Orpheus realizes that people are never alone when they die because death is there to guide them. This is bringing tears to my fucking guys. Oh, God, they're ready and we're not even 20 minutes into the fucking session. His fiance wasn't alone the first time and she wasn't alone this time either. He's, he's gained a new level of respect for death. Death finishes his tea and says with a sigh, it's time. He places his ring in front of Orpheus. There's a fancy TV scene <laughs> change and Orpheus wakes up back in the mountain with the halfling curled up in his knees. Uh, at his knees, and the candle and the ring in his hands. He puts the ring on his hand. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Goddamn notes are on point. And you type so quickly as well. It's great. So, GG to our note taker once again. Next morning happening. Jeannie wakes up and recreates her bioluminescent mushroom which now has a small inscription, do not eat. This pleases the druid and puts her in a chirpy mood. She goes to wake the barbarian who mumbles, I'm awake, after the sixth or seventh shoulder show. They exchange morning pleasantries and follow the smell of food to the dining area. She chippily rambles about her farm girl memories while Orpheus quietly just eats. JD helps himself to some cutlery, quick notices, but opts for observation over action. JD mumbles, somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody should learn to talk less. Genie and Orpheus hear, but don't know who he's talking about. The dwarves heard and silently judge him. Beck heard and calls him out. Hashtag drama JD backpedals <laughs> with how do you know I was talking about her? Commence a roll off between a two with two ties, two inspirations and a guidance. Beck believes the retort. But he goes pissed off dad all, all upon <laughs> pissed off dad all upon telling him off for daring to stamp on the happiness of others after the after all that we just went through together. The dining room becomes an audience and full of <laughs> full of popcorn meme. <laughs> Bjorn says the tour. But of five gold, says the cat, ends up a kebab. <laughs> Tor matches and raises five. <laughs> JD gets riled up, using his backstory to point out that it's not fair that he doesn't have any good memories. A monologue of self-pity and darkness, dragging up the loss of his brother, which he feels responsible for, and the loss of Spencer, which he also apparently feels responsible for. Beck resumes dad lecture on perspective. JD gets up and walks away. Beck calls after him, you leave the knife. JD shows the empty sleeves and shrugs and walks off leaving a heavy, awkward silence. Tor pockets the 15 gold. Beck reminds him that there is still that time for the cat to end up on a spit. Tor slowly puts the coin back in the middle of the table. End scene. So, with that glorious recap and the TLDR of last session, <laughs> what do we want to do now? Um, I, I had made note because I wanted to follow up the moment that, uh, JD is out of earshot. Mm -hmm. Um, so this whole thing went from just normal breakfast table noise that Jeannie didn't really pay any attention to to like this big huge drama thing that was weirdly centered around her but not mm -hmm. and she's she's like kind of in this shaky unsure state so uh back quick question for scene setting when jd walks away because you had stood up to lecture the cat um do you sit back down
if you are here, you are muted. I think we lost him. May have lost him. Okay. We have had to do baby things. Uh, Ruth. Uh, no, he just tried oh. to unmute on me. Oh, there we go. I had the mic pointed up at the air, and that doesn't work for the talking into it parts. Ah. <clears throat> Correct. Um, I uh, Beck would have eventually sat back down, but it's gonna take him a moment before he does. You're gonna see, um, it's not smoke so much as it is that cool mist when you open a freezer and that gust of just cold misty air comes out of it but more coming directly out of his nostrils and just floating away as if he was fuming but it's a cold anger not a, a hot burning anger okay um and i'm assuming that the chatter around the table is still fairly null jessica yeah okay uh, so Jeannie, who had been kneeling on the stool to reach the food because, you know, she's really very short, uh, puts her hand on the barbarian's shoulder and actually stands up so that she's full above, the, like actually at the same head height mm -hmm. with everybody. Um, and she addresses Beck and she says, was was all of that my fault? No. There's something else going on and I don't have enough information. Um, don't worry about it. You were saying about back on the farm? Yeah, I just... I'm sorry. I This morning, I, I just... I finally got some sleep and and we were out of the prison and then there was this breakfast and everybody's here and it just felt so much like like home and I we we come from a, a I come from a big family I mean I'm the only one in my immediate family but we're all I have all my cousins and aunts and uncles and and we travel together and meal times are story times and and my my whole family is we're just we're an oral tradition people and and it just felt right and i didn't i didn't mean to i didn't mean to start something i didn't realize that it would be annoying and i guess maybe maybe i should be more mindful about that beck will reach across the table to with a gently with a clawed hand to place his hand on top of genies and tell her this has nothing to do with you. This is something that he's going to have to work through, whether <clears throat> with our assistance or without it. He he has no happy memories. Maybe he should stop walking away when there's memories to be made. This has nothing to do with you, dear. So Jeannie takes a moment to try to hold your hand and realizes just how massively huge your hands are compared to hers and she ends up holding like a finger and then puts the other hand on top of it and then says thank you i i don't have a whole lot of experience out in the world i i have my family and i've always wanted adventures my everything i know about the world comes from those stories you know and i'd set out to make my own to find my own stories and to to write them and and share them with my with my family, but um, I guess I guess I guess not every story is is happy. And then she sits awkwardly back down, kind of shoulder up against the barbarian. It's a hard lesson to learn that not every story is happy. But it doesn't always have to end unhappy. There can always be more written. That sounds like something my aunt would say. <laughs> then she gets all starry eyed and stares off into the into the dark ceiling. I'm just uh <clears throat> 
doing plot things with our resident rogue real quick. So feel free to continue. So she stares off into the ceiling for a little bit, and then she kind of cuts in partway to a story that she thought she was telling out loud, but she wasn't. And she says, um, would really like her. Uh, the, the story that she, she tells about the ogres, and then where she lifted the whole earth, and oh, and then there was this one, was this one place that she tells about and it's like, it's like, I don't know, she called it Terra or something. And there's cities built right into the cliffs. And it's just, and she just rambles on and on about things that make no sense because she's really leaving out a lot of context. While she uh, comes from a storytelling people, she's not a storyteller herself. She's a story rambler. And She was also a child before she... <laughs> Right. Yeah, she was. She, she never was also those. a child. She was. She was a child before she left, uh, and still in her mind is. She's still only like fourteen in her head. Um, but more importantly, everyone around the around the fires back home knows all these stories, and so you can tell stories in bits and pieces because everyone knows the story, and they generally like interrupt and fill in as you go, and that's just how their family worked. Orpheus sits there smiling at the half story, not trying to follow along <laughs> at all. He puts his big hand on what should be the small of your back, but is actually just your entire back <laughs> <laughs> and tries to get you to sit down while you're talking and standing on the bench. Uh, she's completely oblivious and she just keeps rambling. You good with that, uh, JD? Okay, cool. We will set that in motion. I can already see your face lift at that. Um, we will start that next long rest. So I have just uh, tweaked the abyssal shenanigans that happens when you guys leave and fail. So, um, I, what was that, Aries? It, it'll be entertaining. It'll be entertaining and actually add more to the story, I think. <laughs> I, I like Ash's face. <laughs> 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 Why that face? Is that because after the hand of glory and, and now this? I'm all for it. That's yes. <laughs> I'm all in. I don't know what it is, but I'm all in. I think okay, I, I will tell you now. It's a potential saving grace. And at the same time, it's a potential go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Very much like your candle at the moment. But given I know that this year some people are going through some pretty rough times and that people won't always be able to stick to the cards of what they're supposed to do. I have added a little bit of flexibility in to help one being with their normal selves versus shenanigans. So I am catering to everybody's health and plot at the same time. And it feels great. I, I will say that it's fantastic. I just thought of that on the spot, by the way, when we were talking in messages. I, I fully approve of that. Okay. Um, so for Joey, who knows about the Abyssal stuff, being a warlock and, and has studied uh, planes and stuff, um, this is an addition to what actually goes on upon leaving the abyss. So let me find you. And pasta. There you go. <clears throat> uh, 
You, you feel it? I, 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 a moment I fucking said that and you read it, I saw your spirits lift. So that can be lots of apologies, lots of back and forth and everything. It's going to be great. I hey, the true Canadian in me. Mm -hmm. And for, for the rest of the group, I will share that post game. Everybody else who's listening and the comments. Well, you just have to wait and find out, won't you? Don't give me that look, Ash. <laughs> it's actually it's actually borderline wholesome. All right. So, um, you're talking about terror and <clears throat> earth buildings. Mm -hmm. Golems and trees and goblins and. Mm hmm. So she's just. She's just rambling on, telling half stories, and at some point tapers off when she realizes that, like, there's no food on the plates, and she just sort of trails off and stops talking, starts picking at the crumbs on her plate. Okay. Orpheus, you were half listening, but not trying to follow? Uh... Orpheus realized he wasn't going to get the full story. <laughs> so he just continued smiling and nodding along. When Orpheus put his hand on Genie's back, was that the hand he put the ring on? Or is that the hand that's still on the table shoveling food in his mouth? The hand he put the ring on. I'm imagining Genie's on her left or on his left. And Ew. it's on his left hand. Raph? Yes, ma'am? Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. I already hate you. Because... 11. You take six points of necrotic damage. As Orpheus touches your back, you feel cold. You feel a cold surge course through your body and almost like the life is being sucked out of you. Uh, Orpheus. What the hell is necrotic damage? Life it's steal. Just, it's just the typing. Yeah. Like psychic when when you're when you I give you a bad pun and you guys are like oh yeah one d six psychic damage um nothing Orpheus. in particular I need to make note of just that I've lost six health points it's just six it's just a type of six health points this so think of necrotic damage as life steal in some cases uh Orpheus you gain three temporary hit points. Can I give those back? No. I mean, would he know that he gained them? That seems meta. It's um. He feels invigorated after touching you. Just a, just a little bit, yeah. I should you roll the figure. I mean, I would feel invigorated after touching me too. Oh boy. Gonna be one of those. We're starting days. slow. This we're like twenty minutes in, and this is the first one, so this is pretty slow for us. No, I mean, we already had it. That's what she said. Mm. He probably does not figure it out. I rolled a ten to figure it out. Yeah, no, you have no fucking clue. You just feel a small surge of life appearing out of nowhere, and I'll gasp mm -hmm. and look behind me. That is definitely enough to get me to stop talking. Okay, what are you looking behind you for? At what the 
coldness was. Like, if you put an ice cube at someone's back, they're going to gasp and look behind them. Okay. He just offers his hand. And I'm going to be confused, but I'm going to sit down and stop talking. Okay. Um, okay. So. Rubbing idly at my back. You, you do lose a little bit of color in your face as well. Like a tiny little bit. The blood from your cheeks seems to disappear slightly. Orpheus moves his hand from her back back to in front of him, holding his plate as he finishes uh, whatever's left on it. Okay. And now those three temporary hit points are gone. I see, love and hate you. You see, this is what you get for putting on a ring that you have no fucking clue what it does. And given from death himself. I'm just going to put this ring on, you know, what's the worst that can happen? All right. <clears throat> so, uh, everybody... Uh, as this conversation draws to an end and a couple of eyes glance over at Jeannie as she shivers, um, Bjorn turns around and asks, you okay? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know, felt a cold something. I, not, I don't know. Probably fine. Okay. Um, Orpheus, go ahead and make a perception check for me, please. Oh, that's really good. Okay. Uh, 18, because I have a plus zero wisdom. Okay. Um, have you ever been pick pickpocketed IRL? No. Okay. Well, what happens is you feel... It's like an itch, like... It was it was a very poor job and you feel like an itch. I you you had the the hand of glory in your pocket, right? Is did you put it in your trouser pocket, your snake pocket? Uh yes. Okay. Um you you just feel a slight disturbance on your clothing and you hear the Uh, the the sound of metal on stone and it just goes at a distant and he feels that sudden weight not in his pocket anymore yep <sighs> Himbo panic, y'all. He's going to reach down and start patting his pockets. It's not there. Yo, I'm not even going to ask you to roll. It's not there. You think you feel it, then you realize, no, that's not it. That's, that's the other thing. Himbo panic. Yep, he's gonna go uh, following that noise. Okay. Not he's not gonna say anything. He's just gonna stand up suddenly and follow that chittering noise. Okay. So Jean's gonna look after him, look it back, and then get down and follow. Okay. 
Um, Beck, you were sat opposite Orpheus, correct? In my mind's eye, because he reached over the table. Yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking. Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me. That's what, just 10 plus wisdom? Uh, I'm asking you or, to roll for it. I'm sorry, d20 plus wisdom. Yes. Okay, that's a uh, flat 15. Okay. Um, you catch the glimpse of that spider-like creature, that the mechanical spider that you saw earlier, you just see the tail leg of it fade away. Fade away, like, become invisible? No, like, away, like, like right out of your face. line of sight. Okay. Do I recognize it as such? Absolutely. fucking lutely Okay. I mean, it, it seemed like a pretty unique thing. Well, I mean, you've seen it once, and considering <clears throat> you are in an area... Where you only know that thing to have existed, it would make sense. Okay. Um, do I see its owner anywhere around? Um, not sat with you currently. No. Uh, do I see him over in his little workshop area over yonder? You you hear the noise of rummaging and tinkering and whatnot. Is that the same direction that yep. Orpheus and Genie are heading in? Yep. I will glance to look over at JD and try and see what's going on with him before following the rest of them. JD is currently doing sulky emo Cat kebab things. He's licking himself in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Before I uh, step away from the table, knowing that the 15 gold is still sitting on the table, I'll look over at Tor and Bjorn and let them know that uh, he's been a cat kebab once. Just uh, ask him to show you the scars. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll I'll walk away. And they I'll they look at the you, puzzling as they all as they they take uh their original wager back into their pockets uh with a, a look at each other. No longer kind of interested in this wager, and knowing that JD has just been accused of theft, uh, they kind of repocket and kind of firmly secure their coin purse to their belts and put them to the front of them so it's almost like a, an extra sack. But else. <laughs> mm -hmm. They kind of just like nod but quizzically. <laughs> They they nod because they're not sure of how they really want us what they really want to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, because this large dragonborn just told them that he was a kebab at one point in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, the 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 tick 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 the metal on on the stone floor comes to a halt. And before you, smaller than you, Genie, is a rather old-looking gnome. Very long gray beard, uh, half-moon spectacles, one with a crack in it. And he's just there uh, tinkering away. And uh, Orpheus, you see 
the hand of glory next to him as he's kind of looking over it as he's messing with something. Someone's taller than me? I mean, someone I'm taller than? Yeah, he's a fucking gnome. Uh, excuse me. He looks at me. Yes? Where'd you get that? Or what, this? Yes, that. I uh, I borrowed it. From my pocket? Yeah. I'm confused as to what this thing is. I have never seen anything like it. And, and you're starts... not going to see it any farther because then he reaches over to pick it back up. Make a sleight of hand check. He's not doing it subtly. No, this isn't for subtlety. This is for speed. Uh... Dirty 20. Okay. I had um, math. Sorry. It's fine. Uh, as as he sees your hand, he lunges forward, but um, by the time he tries to hug it, his face ends up in a pile of um, nuts, bolts, screws, books. This bro uh, comes up to my ankles. He's actually an ankle biter. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So, yeah, you have your hand of glory back. He missed. He he Meanwhile, Jeannie in. is, like, suddenly in awe and fascinated at all of these really cool things she's never seen before and a whole person who's shorter than her. He's holding this wax-like hand thing in both hands. Touch this again and I will end you. In, I in a... A very a tone that you have never heard from him before. Yeah, at that, Jeannie stops every ounce of wonder and like spins slowly, tilts her head up, and looks at him like quizzically. What the? F so have you seen this hand of glory yet, Jeannie? I don't think you have, have you? No. Okay. No. So, because he pocketed it on purpose yeah. to hide it. So what you actually see right now, back including, is uh, a black, dead human hand that has red uh, spiral-like patterns, and it's actually and the, and the color and the red flow and wrap around uh, a thick black candle. It's about six inches tall handle the hand itself you you look at um you look at a human arm and it's literally the entirety of their forearm but rather than having it elbowed it's a circular base so you can put it down and light it so basically what i see is the circular base and like the back of the knuckles and some candle yeah Um, Orpheus, I don't think he meant ill. I point to the spider that's hanging out. I think this is what took it. I don't, I don't, I don't think he meant ill. I think he's just curious. Just really halting, really stuttery. There we go. Uh, at um, at Jeannie looking scared. At least that's how that's how I'm interpreting Jeannie looks. That's scared. what you should be seeing. Um, he he relaxes. The kind of ragey look in his eyes just kind of pitters out. Like, you could imagine that maybe his face was almost clouded in anger. Mm -hmm. And you can visually see that relax and 
dissipate. But he doesn't say anything. So she tilts her head and sort of raises her eyebrow at you. And then looks to the gnome and remembers her glee at finding someone shorter than her. <laughs> and she says, I'm I'm sorry. He we've had a rough I don't even know how long. And um it's this is apparently important to him. This is this is Orpheus. He's my friend. He's big and uh, really big, but he's really nice. The gnome I'm kind of leans like he stands up and goes to look at Orpheus, and he just he he's he's rather clumsy in his um, spatial awareness at times, and he looks all the way up. All out, all out, and eventually he leans so far back he just falls over. Hey, um, I thought that might be an eventuality, so if you'll check fantasy grounds, I rolled a nat twenty to catch him. It's twenty-two. You you kind of just put your staff in the way, and he kind of falls back onto the staff, and you're trying to nudge it back up. Yeah. First nat twenty. <laughs> mm. Um, used an RP. Anyways, I introduce myself. I'm Jeannie Tealeaf, uh, the the daughter of so and so, and 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 I ramble on the full like formal greeting. Okay, he just Which sits there guys. and just waits for you to finish, mm. and then smiles. That's it. <laughs> You've rambled on so much so quickly. He's like, uh huh. <laughs> And I ask him, what's your name? What was his name? I actually Jordan. just going to ask. It's short. I'm, I'm pretty sure I gave you his name last session. I, I took note. I'm taking notes on all your NPCs. It's Shorty. Or at least that's what, that's the only name you've given us so far for him. The Goliath called him Shorty, I think. Yeah. Shit. I thought I'd given you a name. Bollocks. DM like a prep. Okay. Uh... I have a whole page for them. He's a gnome. <laughs> and Bjorn and Ryan the Giant and Warren and Shorty. Warren, there you go. That's his name. Oh, is that the, is that the yeah. same? Okay. I knew I'd given you a name. As Warren. I'm walking up, I would greet Warren. Ah, good morning. Fun seeing you here again. Well, we're apparently going to be around for a while. Um, is everything okay? Uh, I... But Orpheus kind of offers out a very tiny hand to shake. No ill, no ill will met. Bygones be bygones. Like at this point, in order for you to shake his hand, he's either going to have to climb several books or you're going to have to at least get on, like, partial knee. Or somebody's going to have to pick him up. Can't be me. Stand him on your shoulders. I, I just spent 50 years in uh, prison in... in uh, Office? What's it called? Huh? Where I'm passed out. What's it called? God what? Damn it. Coma? Now I have actual amnesia from this. Coma? Coma? Yes, thank you. Okay. Dude, I'm a weakling. There's no way I can do shit. It's a wonder I could even catch him. So Warren offers a very tiny hand, his own hand, as, as an apology. How big is this hand? Tiny. He's like gnome size. He's like maybe two foot. So I offer him a pinky. Okay, that's fine. I look at Jeannie first, though. I, I, I holding holding the wax hand. Mm -hmm. He takes one of his hands off, looking at Jeannie. She nods encouragingly, like, "Yes, please do this." 
and he reaches down to offer a pinky. He has to kneel a little bit. Yeah. He he shakes it. He's quite enthusiasm. Uh, please, please don't take my things without my permission. Sorry, it just I've heard of I've never seen it. I've heard about it. And read you, about it. You could just ask. I think I know what it is. Please don't ask now. Not my business. As I, a tear just rolls out of the side of his eye. I don't delve into people's personal problems. I deal with mathematics and angles and he just lists off an entire bunch of mechanical like bullshit cogs, levers, Tech everything. Interrupt. Glazes over. <laughs> yeah, Peck will try his best to politely be like, "What, Warren? 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 Yes." Um, Genie, <laughs> does Genie notice the tear rolling down? Orbit? Perception. Perception oh. check. You you see a light. You see the light hit something. You're not quite sure if it's a tear. You see the light okay. refraction. When the gnome goes off on his little tangent, I'm like all ears. Completely okay. there. Completely here for this. <laughs> uh, he, he looks up at Beck. Yes? Um, not everybody is as enthusiastic with uh the way things work uh our, our friend orpheus here he he doesn't necessarily worry so much about how things work just how effective they are genie and myself be happy to entertain those conversations maybe during lunch hmm a lunch date with the newbies and me getting to talk about a whole bunch of cool stuff. Mm. Jenny claps her hands and jumps a little and she says, yes, please, let's do it. That sounds like fun. I have to put it in a box. Um, he... <laughs> what? <laughs> he has to put it in the box. Like, he has a mental schedule, like, a, a, literally a mental book of things. Um, so, okay, but Jeannie hears this and she starts looking around for books and she's like, I don't... You, you see a couple of books, but not the kind of books that you write in, although they have been written in. You So when you were like in, in high school or something, you did English literature and you were given copies of the book to write in, that's basically what's gone on. Like with uh, arrows and everything. Uh, I'm going to preface this with in America... We don't get our own books in school. Okay. Well, we I have will... to share books from like 500 years ago. I mean, I was homeschooled and I just used the library. So it's basically. Y'all are poor motherfucker. I'm sorry. Um... No, America doesn't <laughs> care. This is, a converse, this is a conversation for not really OnlyFans content, but we can put it on OnlyFans because we'll talk about it during the break. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there are books, like, they're literally books that you would find in a library, but they have literally been vandalized with all kinds of notes, formulas, arrows, cogs, everything. Think the potions book that Harry had from Harry Potter. Yes. The one where he was learning things, like, tips and tricks. For Someone who's never seen better. Harry Potter. Uh, tip for all of the, the listeners and viewers, Harry Potter references go really well for Ashley. <laughs> oh good, I made a Harry Potter reference in the notes for you. And I only know this one because I watched the Fantastic Beasts, Beasts movie. Okay. Well, in the <sighs> sixth Harry Potter book, there is a book that used to belong to the Half-Blood Prince. Snape was the Half-Blood Prince. Snape kind of... Spoilers! Fuck off about spoilers! I've basically, never Jeannie, seen it. Basically, or read Jeannie. the books. Think about if somebody had a mathematical formula and they had found a better way to do that that problem or that equation and they hand wrote that in the notes in the sidebar of the book. 
I, I literally just said that I was homeschooled and, and used the library and okay. for all Pristine. exactly like that. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's, I, I yeah. know how I, I books are my jam, guys. I know how to <laughs> and, and flex. <laughs> And, and 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 book flex. <laughs> yeah. Her page. I know all about the glue and the binding and the stitching. Uh huh. You should move on before I. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to because I sense a genie spiel. <laughs> <laughs> she really is super excited about this, though. Can I request just a Harry Potter marathon when all of our characters survive and like get past this? Like we as players watch Harry Potter in our characters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cause that'll be fun for me. Orpheus okay. is so dumb. What did he do? What I, the Hermione scene where she punches Malfoy? Yeah. Imagine that'll be the only scene where <laughs> Orpheus gets excited. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> time. No more tangents. This happens way too much, way too often, for way too long. And we still get further than doing. the Saturday game. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, he he goes back to Orpheus and says, "Um, I've never seen this. I didn't think this. I didn't think this existed." You ouch, turning my neck this way really fucking hurt. Please don't. Oh, well, I tried to do the thing that Orpheus is trying to do with his other hand. Well, well, do it with the other hand. Uh, no, just turning down where it hurts. Okay. Uh, you can. We can talk about it later. And then he brings his hand back down. Okay. Um, so, what can I do for you? Um, well, if the, uh, the property has been returned to the rightful owners, uh, I, I didn't have any other business. Ah. Uh, as you say this, uh, Bjorn saunters over and he says, uh, do, you, do you have a moment? Uh, he, he's like, ah, you've met Warren, our local, um, yeah. And, and then turns, turns on his heels. So when he asks, was he talking to Beck specifically or to the group? Uh, everybody minus Warren. He looks down at Warren, gives him a kind-hearted smile and a gentle nod and turns on his heels to walk away. Okay. Um, it's going to be tough to pull Jeannie away, but she's really very excited, so she rambles off something about being excited to see all the things and she wants to know how all of them work and uh, then she trails off following Orpheus and okay. waving back down the hall every now and then okay <clears throat> trying to encourage Jeannie to keep going we're gonna have lunch with him later come on <laughs> we can talk about more of the, the things that he does later. Come on, Miss Jeannie. Did you see that spider thing? It can move on its own. It has all it these legs. Up and it's carry more it. than eight. I don't know it, why it's more than eight. And she's just going on. It can pick him up and carry him. That's how he scurries from place to place. He's not what? that fast. It's great. I want one. But we can discuss those with him later. Come on. Can you ride the spider? I'm almost his size. I'm just seven inches taller. It's not that much. Orpheus is just shaking his head like <laughs> like a slightly disappointed parent. <laughs> you're, you're the parent that's sad that their child's in ballet when you really wanted them to be in taekwondo. <laughs> uh, 
No, I'm the parent that wanted my kid to be on the football team because that doesn't involve math or science or thinking. <laughs> Hot tip, kids, please do STEM. Don't do sports as, as a, a replacement for STEM. STEM is important. Yeah, she needed. She's a nerd. But, um... Orpheus did theater. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Still not a replacement for STEM. Still fantastic. And Better than beating people up. And that's where we'll go on break. So, break time. Welcome back. I hope you all had a good stretch, got a snack. Although, to your break, it would have been like non existent because the full session uploaded is like two and a half, three hours at most. So, before we went on a break, Bjorn uh, came over and asked you if you all had a minute, turned on his heels, and walked away and you decided to follow him uh back at the gnome all the way down the hallway <laughs> <laughs> he leads you to um the the sleeping area um where it's a little quiet and everybody's still stuffing the faces and doing people things uh he kind of notices JD like catnapping and, and doesn't maliciously kick, but nudges with his foot the uh, the pole on which the of where the beds are and just wait, wake up, nudge, nudge, nudge. What was that for? Uh, you, you, I, I need you. Oh, okay. I'm I'm here. Where do you need me? Just to stay there, but I need you awake and listening. I just sit up and just start cleaning myself. Like how cats usually do when they first wake up. Okay. Um He he sits down, he squats in the corner and says As you can see, our economic reach is not the best. We're down an important person. I'm not sure where the accents are going today. He's speaking Scottish accent, okay? Like, typical Scottish dwarf. Um, and we're, we're down a merchant. He be the one that can get us the basics, whether it be arrows, junk found on the battlefield, you name it, he can get it. Nothing spectacular, nothing or fancy, just our basics. Um, we haven't really been able to do anything in terms of hunting with bows and arrows or spears or anything of that shape. Uh, we don't know where he is. He went on one of his fact-finding item mission things, went to go and get supplies, and we haven't seen him for like three weeks, and we don't know where he is. We've sent out search parties and they've come back with nothing. What would you be able to do as a favor and find where the little shite went? Is everyone here? Yes. Okay. How tall is this person? Uh, is he <laughs> short, tall. Oh, well, Bjorn really or short? The, the, the merchant? I'm, I'm asking Bjorn about the merchant. The, okay. Um, at this point, everybody in the party, you notice that. Uh, JD no longer has that attitude issue. He's his usual happy go lucky. Help. I'm gonna lick my balls in public cat. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, he's 
you you met Warren, right? He he's like Warren. He's like two Who's foot Warren? three. Uh, he's a gnome. I didn't meet no gnome. Oh well, he's a gnome. Everybody else here has met him. He was sat at the table, I think. I'm not too sure. He had long gray beard. Was he the really short one? Aye. Ah. Uh... Um, he's a little bit senile too. Like, just talks obscene amounts of shite. If you thought Warren was bad, Warren at least makes some sort of sense. Are they related? I don't know. Gnomes live so long, they very well could be. Uh, last we heard of him, he he was, uh, this is where the DM needs to do quick DM things and look at his own fucking world map. A world map. Wow. That kind of day, apparently. You shut your face, Ash. I see that grin. <laughs> Where's the little reset button and can I find something to stab it? No. No, that is no. <laughs> Uh, that grin wasn't for you, but I mean, if it makes you feel better, you can have it. I already did. I I, I got paper clips and safety pins. I have a rapier. I have a throwing knife. I have a set of throwing knives. I'm so glad I'm not the only one going to die today. So do I. <laughs> the things I can do with that rapier. Excuse uh, me, sir. That'll do it. There'll be no stabbing the DM, thank you. Are you sure? Stabbing. The DM is a no stabby you. zone. She's, are, she's are we stabbing. talking about penetration? <laughs> Welcome to Derail 101. I don't think she wants that something that sharp. JD knows all about penetration. Are, <laughs> are you not consenting to being stabbed? Not by she that thing. Confusingly. But I would. I, I this is I, dull I we, and thin. I move that we continue to use the word penetrate as opposed to stab. <laughs> I mean, if you would like, the penetration can happen without that part. And then it's still dull, but even more thin. But there's no protection. Yeah, now there's no protection. Are you trying no to proposition protection. me? Are you trying to proposition your DM? Uh, I'm trying to hit the reset button. Do we know where, where it's located again? Where is it and how far in do we have to penetrate? <laughs> that is in the no-no square. And it is about three inches in. Ooh, just TikTok audio. Out, Fuck out your no no square. <laughs> uh, we have officially reached the time of the recording where we get nothing fucking done. All because the DM decided to misgender herself. And then chips come out my nose. That hurt. I mean, that sounds like a you problem. It I mean, is. better than a. Rapier coming out of your nose. <laughs> if, how long that thing? If you need it, if you need me to hit the reset button with something else, I do have a magic wand. Let me see the other end of it. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Please recall that this is audio only going to YouTube. That, that'll, that'll reach three inches in. It's fine. That'll do. I mean, in that case, do you want my chapstick? <laughs> it's not, not curvy enough. enough. That might get stuck. <laughs> Did we just say stuff. the same thing, Aries? Did you say it's not big enough? Oh, he said it's not big enough. I said it's not curvy enough. I said thick enough. Oh. And I was thinking, this is how you end up in the hospital with... I fell on it. Swallow. 
Do what you're good at. <laughs> or you could show off and gargle first. <laughs> Turn away from the computer before you spit. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I hate you so much right now. No, you don't. No, Not you, Graf. I love you. Oh, no, that one doesn't work, this one. Why did you... Oh, oh wow, that was an experience. <laughs> That's what okay, he said. Okay, Jessica, I'm fine. How about you go look at your notes and find out where the merchant went? I had it up like three minutes ago. We decided to try and poke and prod the reset button. Turn it up three inches ago. <laughs> I like how the it being up is still being referred to as past tense, <laughs> indicating that it is no longer up now. It couldn't it handle the it. penetration. <laughs> Might quite possibly be flaccid at this time. Guys, um, if I am not online tomorrow or the next day, Jessica did it. But I probably had it coming. Anywho. We last saw him just south of here at the Misty Mountains. It's like a, a small island-ish. But it's not too far out. That's where we heard him last. And for a point of uh, reference, the DM will now show the players exactly where that is. What is Let DM going to show that it's on? Fantasy grounds. I'm about to Okay, forward. thank God. I don't have to turn like an old woman because I can't <laughs> turn my neck right now. <laughs> Sharing. There we go. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, so you see the Misty Mountains just slightly south as. Obviously, Firetop Mountain, and then slightly northeast of that, there is a, a small island. That's where that is. Yes. How do I make it smaller? I can't access anything else on Fantasy Grounds. Um, and I can't m access the bottom right corner to drag it up. Uh, you can click and drag it. Like You can click directly in it, and then you can move it around. Ah. So if you need to resize it, you can move it up. You'll see the shrinker, and then you can expand and shrink at your will. Uh, okay. question. Yes. Is the shrinker available IRL? <laughs> yes, it's called the Antarctic. <laughs> that could give you a quick breath. <laughs> I so if I so if I zoom in, can you see me zoom in? No. Okay. Well, if anything, I will give you a screenshot. And so we're in the Misty Mountains, and then Firetop Mountain is where the the lava's coming from. I'm about to give you a screenshot. Okay. So the legends say. It was it was stated as a legend. Aha. That's the area. Now that area is, it says small. It's, it's kind of not. This is quite a sizable island with not very much in it. Like, I mean, as, as Illustria, as, Illustria as, as a whole. So this island may look small, but it's not quite as small as you would have believed. 
What was that, Graf? Objects in mirror are bigger than they appear. Yes. 16 inches bigger. <laughs> All right. Back to it. So that's where we saw him last. That's where we heard he was going. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there seems to be some sort of building. We haven't really done too much recon, but it might be worth a shot. Guys, I'm not quite sure what's on that island, but I know him being the curious little shite that he is, he'd be definitely interested. Now, the, the request, I guess, or the favor that I'd like you to do is to come and bring him back unharmed and very much alive. Are a few scratches okay? Preferably not. What if we don't do them? It's not alive. I mean, to be honest with you, it's not like I expect him to be pristine. That little fucker has been getting to all kinds of shit. So, if he already looks like he's had the shit kicked out of him, it's probably because he has. And he probably fucking deserved it because he's got a right now. So if he happens to insult you, don't take it to heart. He looks at each one of you individually as he says that. So, um, Jeannie didn't hear that last bit because she was tapping Beck's forearm and saying, it's an, it's an adventure. We can go on an adventure. This is a whole story. We could, we could have our, we could have a real story. You see this little halfling sort of like bouncing up and down, patting your arm and the dwarf just looks at you in somewhat bewilderment and confusion at the same time. Come on, Beck. We gotta we we, we gotta do this. We 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 gotta help them. All the adventurers help people. That's what we do. I'm an adventurer, and she like stands up and throws her shoulders back and is grinning like stupid huge. Now, to get there, you're gonna need... I'm not actually sure how deep that is. You might need a boat. Boat? And we, 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 we brought, I brought this energy back. God damn it, Ash. But I'm not sure where you can get one. We haven't quite dug to the ports yet. We have to go on water. I mean, you can go underwater dry or you can swim across soaking wet. I'd rather not go near water at all. I mean, you already did get in here. I know. I, I saw I saw that acrobatics. You're a natural. Yeah, I wasn't expecting water at the bottom. What were you expecting? Some sort of... Uh... A hay bale? Circus yeah. Net. Fourth wall! <laughs> <laughs> That's a little Easter egg for those who are interested. If you know the Easter egg, put it in the comments below. Swan dive. This is cold. <clears throat> I mean, what? I had, I had a, something lodged in my throat. Wait a minute. Never mind. Too late. Huh. Too late. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> Water check. <clears throat> Everyone put something liquid in their mouth. Oh, I mean, are you volunteering? I said liquid. 
Uh, again, are you volunteering? It's definitely wet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Prozac now. So and that's supposed to make you way? drive in the Sahara Desert? Yeah, that's one of the side effects. Damn. I thought it affected libido, not moisture. <laughs> And the gay man removes his headphones. Uh, we're good. We're good. Back, back to, uh, back to uh, on cue. To our moist little adventure. <laughs> okay, it'll be slightly damp. <laughs> we we will avoid really... we'll avoid the M word, and we'll go slightly damp. <laughs> It was one. moving on now. <laughs> Agreed. Because um, there's obviously somebody uncomfortable in the party, and it's not me. <laughs> I know. Um, so yeah. And somebody's gone a little batty. Not yet. I can't do flying animals yet. It's like level three or something. Wait, really? Not three druid, three druids. Level six. Thank you. Ah. So, yeah. Third I level spells. Knowing the kind of shit he gets into is, uh, could be quite dangerous. Could be bandits. Uh, if it's dangerous, I'm going to need something more than these. Can I just. Beck will ask about the, the kitchen knife. That thing's dull. I was just going to throw that into the wall. Can you <laughs> not? They don't have enough of them in the first place. I just grab it, toss it over to him. I still need something more than... We can I... sort out your equipment. We have enough for one adventure. Quest. Thing. And then uh, it pops into JD's head. Hey, big guy, you have the knife from the winnings, right? Do I still have it? I don't know. Do you? Where would you have put it? It was in his hands when we got sucked up. And then you said that you put it into the waistband of your underwear. Right. Oh, in that case, yes, you still very much have it. I haven't done that yet. Hmm. <laughs> it looked like you were... <laughs> and the cock tease begins! <laughs> uh, he puts his hand to the small of his back where the knife is. What are you going to do with it? Uh, kill bandits if they come near us? You have claws. What is this going to do to a bandit? Jeannie quietly puts her staff behind her, <laughs> away from the cat. And I just keep extending and retracting claws. Uh, so she, Jeannie looks to Beck and to Orpheus. We'll do it, right? We're going to do this, right? We're going to help them? <laughs> Orpheus nods a couple of times, like, slowly. <clears throat> Beck? Yes, I will help you help them. Help you help it's a very them. specific way to describe that. Mm-hmm. So she she doesn't even like she doesn't even hesitate. She then looks to Bjorn and says, We'll do it. We'll help you. We'll find a way. So what how is this uh dagger convo going on? That was not to you guys, that was to those guys. Hmm. 
uh, his hand flexes around the dagger behind him. Okay. He, he's concerned because JD was like a jerk like just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep it, that's fine, but I won't be able to do much with the claws. She, if he looks to Jeannie, she's not inclined to give Catboy anything. He, he's He's even more scary to her now than Orpheus was, even with the trauma. You're not getting it. I rolled really low. Okay. I'm sorry. I needed I to get higher than a 50% and I rolled a two. <clears throat> he has little, very, very, almost no confidence in you. Wow. Oh shit. Build a staff, JD. Hmm? Can you wield a staff? Can I smack people with it? Presumably. Then probably. Does it have a pointy thing on it? Is Bjorn it at this point sits down properly and just crosses his arms, watching and listening intently. And as uh, when JD asks, is it shiny? He just starts putting his hands together. It's not shiny, but it's important, and I will leave it with you for the time being so that you are better equipped. Go and speak to Ryan. I'm sure he can help you out. I... I... Well, he's saying that I look at my claws and then I look at the top and JD's just thinking, what would happen if I sharpen the end of that? I'd rather you didn't make a spear of it. And that, that was in JD's head, not actually like saying out loud. When you had asked about mm -hmm. it being pointy on one end, oh. he'll, he'll say out loud. I would rather you didn't make a spear of it. But for the time being, I still have my dagger. You may use this for the time being. I just go, walking stick. We are not doing old man and walking stick again. I want fucking <laughs> walking stick. If I have staff, I use walking stick. I was referring to an earlier episode. Joey used the you wouldn't part an old man from his walking stick line. Which comes from Lord of the Rings. I don't like Lord of the Rings. Out. Okay, that new member. You, out of out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere, uh the entire you get cave, <laughs> the entire cave shakes and from your spot alone the ceiling collapses. <laughs> Embedding you in your own tomb. <laughs> Every time I watch it, I fall asleep. It's I mean, same, but I still love it. To, to me, it's just something interesting. It's not my cup of tea. Yet he plays D&D. That is yeah, a very weird... D &D. The, the books can be verbose. I will give you that. But that does not make the exciting parts less exciting. It's just like the first three chapters of Harry Potter. Mm. I haven't read Harry Every Potter. book of Harry Potter. I haven't read Harry Potter. Okay. Apparently, we have an uncultured swine amongst our party. <laughs> Bitch, please. I could probably be a pig. It's a funnier animal. It doesn't fly. Yes. <laughs> Damn, I want to turn into a flying pig. <laughs> oh, look, pigs do fly. <laughs> He casts wild shape, Beck casts fly. <laughs> oh shit. Alright, go speak to Ryan. We'll see him and we'll get better equipped. Uh, this Ryan? lot is on the house. 
Who's Ryan? He's the big guy at the forge. Do you guys know who he's talking about? Yes. Okay. I've met with Ryan. And and Bjorn also turned around and said the big guy at the forge. Breakfast with him? She points over her shoulder. Do you not remember breakfast this morning, JD? Oh, I just remember getting woken up by this person kicking me, and I just point to Bjorn. What's the last thing you do remember, JD? Going to sleep last night? This is good shit. Eye contact all around. This is good shit. I'm just looking around. Did I miss something? I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know once I figure it out. Okay. She keeps her mouth shut, but she's watching everybody's faces. <laughs> DM things. <laughs> uh, hmm. Oh, hold on a minute. We, we have uh, a private communication via the rogue. Go ahead and make... Good game. Mm, actually, hmm. First off, go ahead and roll me... I'm going to say history check. I'm going to move that so I don't throw my dice into my dip. Uh, that's a four. You have no recollection. Therefore, the answer to that question is no. Ah, okay. So there isn't really a time limit on this, but the quicker the better. Zoomies. What a what a zoom is. You'll find out later. Well, I'm not going with you. You'll find out when we get back. Oh, I look forward to it. He says, heavily lacking in enthusiasm. Well, I'll leave you to it. He gets up and uh, walks out. <clears throat> So we're going to need supplies, and a map, and tools, and you said a boat? Wait a minute. It's an island. Is it a river, or is this the ocean? I've never seen the ocean before. Uh, would I know, based on knowledge checks, if it's an ocean, or if it's a river? Or if it's an inlet to an ocean? Um, it's a river that leads to uh, the ocean. Okay. It is a river that leads to a lake. Okay, so when you go to cross it, on your right, it will lead to the ocean. On your left, it will be a river that leads to a lake, that leads to another river, etc., etc., etc. Okay. I explained that to Jeannie. Okay. <laughs> I am no less in wonder. We're going to still do lunch with the gnome, right? We, yes. we promised we, he could show us all the cool things that he has and talk about all these cool trinkets that he's made. I imagine that it would better serve us to put in the requests for the supplies that we can get while we're here. 
have our lunch, and then collect There's whatever food. has been gathered before we go. Uh, you didn't pick up grass. Because I want to ride the spider. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a mechanical spider, JD. I really missed a lot. How long have you guys been up for? Oh, a few hours. What time is it? Late Good morning, morning, early afternoon. No, we just finished breakfast. Yeah, but we haven't quite had second breakfast. What second breakfast? The snack. You eat between... more than twice a day. It's the snack between tea and lunch. <laughs> There's tea now. Afternoon tea and dinner and, and supper. And breakfast tea. And midnight snack. That one's my favorite. In late night espresso shot. No wonder everyone else is. Ne you know what? Never mind. <laughs> what else is what? Orpheus. Looks at muscles. Does not answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I poke his arm. Oh, it's muscular. It's it's solid. It's solid, pure muscle. It's a yeah. solid, all right. It's not the only thing that's solid. Hey, <laughs> dick jokes. <laughs> actually, actually, I, you know what? Because it's like mounted four foot above her head. There's a whole lot that goes over Jeannie's head, in fact. A whole 16 minutes over there. <laughs> so, what are we doing? I recommend we request and requisition whatever supplies we plan to gather. That way they have time to gather them. We meet up with Warren for our lunch. Jeannie gets her mechanical spider ride, hopefully. And uh, we, we see where things go from there. Okay. Big is this mechanical spider you're talking about. Big enough to support a gnome. Beck puts his hands together, uh, palms to each other, <laughs> as, as much like a spider as he can, but because it's got the ten legs, it looks more like the mechanical thing, and, and tries to, like, put them close enough to a flat surface for it to, like, demonstrate skittering. It didn't pick up grass. It's still not picking up. How about now? Hey. Deep throat that bitch. <laughs> Is JD the character also afraid of spiders? Very much so. Good to know. Although that was <clears throat> worth every cent of her face reaction just then. <laughs> Listen, Dommy Mommy said. That pit. <laughs> so this group is another group that plays. Will it fit? <laughs> I thought that was just the planet side crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listeners, since everyone is a bunch of thirsty motherfuckers, water check. <laughs> Count. Uh, By sure. Water. It's made with water. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So, who is leading to group? Not the dumb one. It was Beck's idea, so I guess Beck will okay. lead I, I was... the, the party over to uh, 
Ryan. Okay. As we walk, I ask Beck, do you think they'd make me a little throwing knife? Just a little, little, little throwing knife? In his head, Orpheus thinks <clears throat> a toothpick? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sure Ryan will have something that might work for you. Beck is also thinking, having met Ryan, Ryan's going to hand him a toothpick when she asks. <laughs> I'm going to ask for a throwing knife and a carving knife. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> as you make your way over to Ryan, Jeannie, you spot a whole bunch of mushrooms to your left. Sweet, I get derailed. <laughs> I must I must need study these and know what they are and what they do. Okay. Uh so that's a survival check. Would it not be a nature check? Nature check. There you go. Skills. I want to say Beck already found out what they were, but yes. Joe does not remember to try and tell. <laughs> it's an eight. You have no idea. I pick them anyways. Okay. I figure, um, so one of the things that Jeannie was planning on doing uh, was finding, well, obviously the Crystal Library, but it's like an, uh, an apothecary. Okay. Because uh, she wanted to know more about mushrooms. She has a sudden fascination with mushrooms since the one she actually, it's the first thing she ever successfully did. Mm -hmm. um, and so she wanted to find an apothecary to start learning more about the fun herbs. The, uh, not, the not cooking kind, but also the cooking kind. Uh -huh. the, um... <laughs> <laughs> psychic, psychic words. Uh, she's, psychic she's damage really, incoming. Yes, yes. We're, she wants to know the full <laughs> spectrum of possibilities. Possibilities. <laughs> you missed an opportunity. I did not. I refuse to take it. Jeannie wants to know more about the mushrooms because they seem like fun guys. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say she wants to know more about throwing up rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! My neck hurts so bad right now. Oh, the GM has oh. rage quit. <laughs> we just noped the building. I did try to warn you and tell you that you would need your psychic wards. <laughs> <sighs> psychic damage incoming. Joseph? Did say yeah. that. I'm proud of that one. I'm I'm <laughs> proud of you. It's just oh gone. My. You you made Jess leave. So she's, she's just gone. Maybe she's gone to get her mushrooms. She can't deal with our shit. So thanks for listening. Um <laughs> drugs are bad. Okay. Thanks. Drugs are bad if you live in a place they're illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're underage. Some drugs are bad whether they're legal or not, depending on how addicting you can get. If the mushroom glows blue, don't put it in your mouth. Unless, Unless you, you want to throw up. Rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is awkward. <laughs> they have taken the opportunity to like make water or something. I really hope she's not making water. <laughs> That's so sick. <laughs> Paying the water company? Maybe just a tip. Graphic Kings just drinks for water quietly. I, I, 
I will say, I am full of energy for finishing this now. Ashley takes a hit and then drinks her water. Aries has fully downed an extra large coffee with espresso. Are we Welcome fucking back, done? <laughs> are we know, fucking are done? We? I don't know, are we? <laughs> you I mean, fucking we better be. Outros. That's what she said. <laughs> well, you, you know got what? Me, you got me derailed by mushrooms, and I pick a few, and I'm planning on taking them to the first apothecary that I see. Okay. Uh, so, Not Joe. Them or anything, just store them. It's For that piss poor quality pun. In my defense, I did warn people. There was a warning for prepping your psychic wards. Psychic damage incoming. Yaha. Yaha. You get six oh, points of psychic damage. Okay. <laughs> and I actually rolled for that. <sighs> if we are going to pun, if we are going to pun, at least make them grade A, not grade shroom. Please and thanks. Okay. Jeannie wants a throwing knife and a carving knife. All right, well, fucking role play then. So once I, once I've picked my, and I picked the smaller versions of the shrooms, like my storage space is going to be limited, but the I, I pick a couple and then I scamper back to where everybody else is. God damn it, Aries. Have we seriously got this energy flowing right now? <laughs> oh, is that what we're blaming? <laughs> it's like every week, but it's the same every week. Okay. Uh, so as you took away the shrooms and approach a similar built like person uh, to Orpheus, you hear the tink, tink, Tink and the sounds of the hissing as freshly made tools are put into the water and, and the steam just goes everywhere. I mean, being as small as I am and at the height of the things that are happening, it's probably going to be a little more than tink, tink, tink. I will cover my ears as I go up to it. Okay. Uh, he's completely engrossed in his work. Beck will wait for the next time he goes to dunk another tool into the water to quench it. And he'll call out, Hail, Rhine! <laughs> um, oh, good morning! Good morning. Not sure what that accent was. Not sure what accent he even has yet. Um... What can I do for you? Bjorn said we could see you about uh, requisitioning some equipment. What kind would you like? What is going on in my Zoom chat? <laughs> okay. Uh, your your players are putting their derail in a different place. I've I've noticed. Bring me another. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, what? 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 What kind of weapons? What kind of equipment? Um, the what? Sorry. The pointy type. Also, the shiny type. Jeannie rolls her eyes dramatically. Do I notice this? I would like, I would like a throwing knife, if if you don't mind, and a carving knife, if that's possible. I'll have to make a carving knife. But he gestures towards the chests that are on the 
that for the the, the the lava. Help yourself. Can I even see into the chests at my height? Yes, like they're on the floor. You probably chest. have to do this. Um, can, can I go rummage them and see if I can find a, a throwing knife or something? Orpheus will hold you up so you can rummage through it. Well, you see, here's here's the thing: that when you open a chest, it's basically Mary Poppins's bag. There is a whole lot of space in there for something that's so small. Q puns. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about physics and my height. Depending on how big these chests are, I will not be able to open. Normal them, treasure chests. Small. Normal treasure chests. Um, Jeannie, Jeannie's very small. Orpheus is going to kneel next to the chest and allow her to climb on his knee to rummage through the chest as he opens it for her. Okay. I'm... Yeah. No, I can see that. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you look I in. Find... You look in, and it just goes on and on and on. There's a whole lot of space in there. Okay, so I'm gonna clamber down and ask Orpheus specifically. Can you help me find throwing knife that like I can carry? Absolutely. Two toothpicks. And he chuckles to himself. And she's like, um. <laughs> of course it's over her head. He's gigantic. <clears throat> can he can he find me? DM, can you find uh, me? go ahead and roll. I mean, I think as well. Like when when you actually go into the chest, are you actually going in the chest? No, I'm... I've asked him to do it. He's got longer arms. Okay. So when you put your arm inside the chest, your entire arm kind of disappears. But you feel it's not painful or anything. It's just like when you put something to the bag of holding, you see it disappear. Um, it's just there's a whole lot of weapons, and you rummage around, and you eventually find a knife. It takes a little bit extra long because he's looking for two different types of knives, and I rolled a one and a three for how quickly he was gonna find them. That takes some time. It takes a few minutes. There's a few little nicks on his hand as there were other sharp things in there. Yep. Uh, will these work? And he holds up things that look like they could be actual toothpicks for him. DM? Yeah, they work. Two knives. Perfect. She claps her hands and reaches out to take them. Yeah, one of, them is no one of them is not a carving knife, though. That one is being made by Brian. Like just just two throwing knives. Uh, so I'm going to take them and sort of test them and then look for somewhere, uh, stump or something that I can uh, actually give them a good throw. Uh, these aren't necessarily throwing knives. Uh, they're just normal plain daggers, but you can throw them. I'm going to do it anyways. Okay. If you remember, I left with three throwing knives, and so I'd been practicing on my grand adventure, and mm -hmm. I wanted to get back to that. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you guys need? Not gonna uh, have a brass brazier, do you? It looks at you slightly puzzled. That's the DM looking puzzled. Explain. Uh, I'd need a brass brazier for the find familiar ritual. Um, I could probably make you one over lunch. Whilst you guys are eating, I don't really eat much. I'm focused in my work. He says that, and as as he does, he picks up a rock, uh, crunches into it. I and starts eating up. rock. What was that? Another one. As, as soon as he bites into it, I just take like, I like jump back a little bit. Okay. That reminds me, do you have any sharpening stones? Do you have any? What, oh, what what stones? Like he, he just shifts over a chest from uh, at the start of the side next 
the in between the fo- the forge and the, the anvil. He just kind of uses his foot and just and it slides across the floor. Okay. I I have a lot of time. I don't know why I'm going Scottish. I, I have a lot of time um, to kill whilst we're here prepping. I'm uh, making everything. Do you, ha- do you have any rosemary? <laughs> Take one point of psychic damage. <laughs> Uh, he's got a plus six to charisma. You have to expect the quips. <laughs> I expect better ones. Yes, Aries. Oh, when it's my turn, I, w- I want to look for knives and a uh, rapier. Okay. Who who who's next? What have you got for armors? Um... What leather? It's better than what most of us have. Um, what kind of armor were you looking for? Just something light. Oh, well then, leather's the thing. I don't really have much. I haven't really focused on uh, armor just yet. We're kind of... We don't have the right materials. It's something that we're working on. We're looking at um, a possible business deal that could help bring more objects to for me to mess with. Also, High Panther. So, Jeannie asks, do you have a cloth maker or somebody? I mean, some, somebody sews these and she takes her thumb into the duds that they gave her. That's, um, dwarves are kind of known for that thing. I'm, I'm, I'm asking because I, I don't even have a ba- I lost my bag. The body that I looted was there was a bag with it, wasn't there? There was a bag, yeah. I rummage through it to make sure that I don't have anything left in it, and I offer it to Jeannie. Okay. I mean, we're all gonna need some kind of storage for the things that we collect, right? We should all have our own bag. I found this one. I'll find another. Uh. You see that tent over there? Mm. Um, there is some storage options, limited, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, given I I couldn't help but overhear the conversation uh, between you and Bjorn. I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, he wouldn't mind. Considering you're going to do a help, I don't. I don't need much. I'm a very small person. I just need small things, you know, that that fit me, and, and I can. So she's got like mushrooms in one hand and two knives in another, and she shrugs like, "I, I, I just need a, I just need a small bag." Well, so, um. Beck did just give you his. I'm, it's a, it's a side I'm, bag. I'm disinclined because I'm two foot seven and a grown man's adult shoulder bag is going to drag on the ground. There's no way I can carry that. It would look adorable, though. It's not- as, as Jeannie is saying, she needs small things. Orpheus is going to pout a little bit and look down at himself. They get a little sad. Jeannie does. Does Jeannie notice? Jeannie, that's a nat twenty. Jeannie notices and is confused. And it's not what you guys think. Jeannie assumes. Jeannie assumes that he meant like he himself is too big for her. 
as a being and she but she's confused as to why he thinks that um she doesn't she doesn't linger on that he pointed to the tent so that's where okay that's where she's going uh who who else is looking for some items some stuff cat boy wait are you a boy i don't want to make any wrong assumptions I, cats I look cats i look down pull up my pants as far as i know so glad I'd wander off and miss that. <laughs> he just st- just stares at you with a complete and not a blank expression. Would you by any chance have any uh, I know uh, Jeannie asked for knives, but would you have rapiers? Would that be in the same Yep, thing we have or... yep, yep, the same chest. All sharp objects are in that chest. I go over and I reach my hand into the chest. You rummage around, you, you find one, you find something that is long and thin with a pointy end. I, I pull it out. Do I find any daggers? Yeah. Okay. How many daggers do I find? Two. Okay. I just put the rapier into my pouch and put daggers into my pockets. He look. He then takes a look at Orpheus and says, "I'm pretty sure you don't want any of those toothpicks." No, thank you. Head to the chest to the right of that. There you will find your hammers, your glaives. Your javelins, your battle axes, hatchets, the things that we are more accustomed to using. The big boy pointies. He does so. He he moves over. He moves over to uh, the other chest and looks in and takes out four javelins, two throwing axes, and one battle axe. Remember when I said I was prepping? I'm going to have to ask you to put a few of those back. Oh, no, he's going to just look at them for a while. Oh, okay. He's going to line them up and just look at them. Very well made. Fresh. He's He's not trying to identify that. He's trying to identify... Uh... Not that. Versatility. Hot tip chat. He's trying to identify if he would look good using them. (laughs) Ah, It's adorable and I love it. While Orpheus is digging through the chest, I will uh, ask Ryan if he happens to have any tridents. That's not a common request. No, but my friend over there lost his. And I was wondering if it would be something that we could get replaced for him. Uh, I understand if it's not something you have on hand now. Well, funny you should mention that. We kind of use tridents as fishing apparatus for the time being. Um... Have mine. Are you That's sure? the right size for him too. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I I kind of got delegated back here, which I'm more than content with. I I find my place at the forge. I can crank out weapons and armors and shields. I won't be needing it anytime soon. And besides, I kind of like to use my bare fists. And as he pounds, you you just see some rubble just fall off his knuckles. Only if you're sure. Absolutely. Uh, 
Speckle kind of mosey over to where Orpheus is in, tap him on the shoulder, and offer it to him, holding it somewhere in the middle of the shank staff portion of the trident. Uh, Orpheus turns around, a little uh, befuddled about why someone is bothering him while he's picking out his next signature weapon. Your mic did not pick that up, and I don't know if that was intentional. Um, and then his eyes are just going to light up when he sees the trident. He's going to take it very excitedly and hold it over his shoulder like he's about to throw it. Make a gonna... performance check. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Heroic pose. Victory pose. Bless the fairies. As, as soon as he brings it up over his shoulder, uh, JD would just hold it tight and say, not me. Is is Tor or Bjorn anywhere nearby? <laughs> <laughs> not currently. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? A dirty 25. All right. That's a 19, by the way. Yeah. You uh, are a badass. Damn right I am. And uh, Ryan looks at you and then starts stroking his short and silver beard. And you see a small glint in his eye. And you can tell just by looking at him that he's thinking. No shit he's, he's thinking. Everybody except Orpheus is thinking. <laughs> he then Good goes back that. to work. And I'm missing this. Uh, just out of the blue, JD just like goes, oh, I forgot something. Uh, do you have lockpick by any chance? You see that tent over there? Let me point to the same one. <laughs> the <miscellaneous> supplies, <laughs> like <the> depot. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. I don't deal with that stuff. He he shows you his big, beefy, blistered hands, and then picks up the hammer. This is mine. <laughs> I don't think I could hold a lockpick without breaking it. Beck will, because he's still like in the vicinity. Uh what about Warren? You think he has smaller implements of that nature? He cocks his head to the side. Now that you mention it, it wouldn't surprise me if he did. It would surprise me if he didn't. Yeah, I, I kind of got that feeling too. Ah. Uh, Man hides, hoards, anything he can get his fucking hands on. Yeah, we know. <laughs> casually just glances back and forth. Casually glances at Orpheus, still posing, I imagine. Oh yeah, he holds that for a heroic moment. <laughs> a heroic moment. Big and if I was to bring hero points into uh, play and make this slightly pathfindery, you most likely would have gotten one. <laughs> so, uh, Genie, as you are going over to this tent, you see all kinds of bits and bobs, some, some, some basic wooden shields, uh, some arrows, short bows, long bows, and some backpacks that uh, one size fit all kind of thing. 
Yeah. So I'm I'm specifically going after a backpack that would be suitable for a dwarf or gnome somewhere in between. Anything close closer to my size. Um, and then a smaller pouch if I can find one specific for my herbs and the the backpacks have a little tag attached to them. One size fits all. Well, that's that's uh they're all dwarves, so that's that's closer and better than what was offered me, but they're still gonna be slightly big. But I'll I'll pick one of them and then Do you put it on? Yeah, I'm gonna try. Okay. Gonna try it well then when you put it on, it shrinks to fit you. Okay. That's why oh. I said it's one size fits all. Well, she didn't understand that. No, I was hoping for a choo choo moment, like fucking put one. On. I was gonna, I was literally just gonna turn and say, "Fucking put one on, god damn it!" <laughs> no, you're supposed to say "choo choo, motherfucker." Yeah, or oh, "choo choo, motherfucker." All aboard, bitches! <laughs> so she she puts one on and she, and it does the thing, and she's like, oh, "Okay, this this will work." Um, she she goes from mildly disappointed to really quite impressed. Uh. I'm looking, hopefully, for any smaller bags that could work for... You come across uh, similar type bags as uh, to what was previously offered. Uh, also, with tag of one size fits all. Excellent. And I put my mushrooms in it. And Now, uh... it's not a bag of holding, but you can fit what you need to in there. This Fine. isn't that this isn't something just like, oh you know we'll shove it in the bag of holding. This is this thing has a limit. I'll be I'll be reasonable with it. Uh, and I'd like to try those um sorpos actually. Just for fun. I'm not sure that I'm gonna carry them because the daggers are more my thing, but I do I'm curious because I see them and I'm like, oh I've never I've never done that before. Okay, you, you pick one up and you stretch it out and Quang. Uh, go ahead and make a dexterity check for me. Okay. Sixteen. You actually, considering it's not usually your kind of thing, you're almost a natural. It does nick you a little bit on, on, on the last twang, but not as much as it would have done if somebody had no idea what they were doing. Okay. And All it right. does it does sting a little, but not enough to do any damage. Well, then Jimmy is curious and she small grabbed. welt does appear. Not phased. And she um grabs five arrows and the Chorpo, which is now her friend. We are friends now. This is fine. And she scampers back to the group. Uh, the arrows come in quiver size of 20. Okay. So you take an entire quiver. Only because the owner would be pissed if you just took five singular arrows from a full quiver and let him sell something that is not quite a full quiver. Oh no, she's, she, she wouldn't do that. There, there's ways of things. Would I pass Jeannie on the way out or like would she- uh, You kind of pass her? cross as she leaves and you come forth. I, I like, ooh, a bow, Where, where'd you get that? I look up at him, kind of surprised in a way. Uh, back there in, in in the tent, and she looks like weird and uncomfortable and awkward, and then keeps walking. And do I notice that she looks weird? I mean, I feel like I make it pretty obvious. It, Jeannie's not very good at subtle. Could also just make an insight check with a super low DC. I was going to tell us an insight check. It's 
sweats are good. I should get less than five. Uh, 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 I don't know. You have yeah. no fucking clue. Okay, so then I just skimper off to the tent, and I do I see anyone there? No, just you. Okay, I look around. Do I see any lock picks? Uh, you do come across uh, a small stool that seems to have a box that is um, open that does seem to contain uh, a handful. I grab four lock picks. Um, you only need really need one because thieves tools. I grab one lock pick, and then I notice the bags, and I was like, "Is is this the bag that Jean Jeannie was wearing?" I lift it up, and it's like super big, and it says, "Yeah." When you look it over, it says one size fits all. This one feels a little heavier. I put it on. Than the rest. Okay. Are you not curious as to why? Oh, you opening it? Yeah. Uh, You actually see a set of thief tools. It's not yours, but it's a set. I close it. I I put the lockpick into it. Uh, And then I grab a short bow and a quiver. It shrinks to comfort you. This is nifty. Uh, and then as I was saying, I grab a short bow and a quiver, and I just, like, pull it back. It feels with, good. With an arrow, I don't fire it, I just... It feels good. No. feels very natural. Now let's see who actually got this reference. I don't put the quiver on my back, I put it on my hip. I feel like I should know this reference. Ash knows this reference. That's fine. You are valid. (laughs) Fair enough. Yeah, so I have the quiver on my hip, and then I just sling the bow over my shoulder. Okay. Uh, do I notice anything else like that would pop out to me? Um, you do see something that is slightly shiny. Um, I go over to it and I look at it. Like a brass bowl. Uh, would I, because of my experience in the thieves guild, would I know what a brass brazier would look like? This is that. I... That that was that was intense. <laughs> Sorry, it, it was, but but player knows that. Does JD know that? Yes. Like I see that it's brass. Okay. I grab it, holding in my hands, and then I just turn and just walk back over to uh, make my way over to the group. I see Beck, and I go. I look at it, look at it back, poke back in the shoulder. <laughs> you really are a fucking cat. This and is great. And notice him over my shoulder, and then I turn the rest of the way around. He, he has. Holding this. Yeah. Oh, where, where'd you find that? I, I point to my bag, point to quiver, bow. There. And I point to the tent. Same place she went. There. Um. All right then. Uh, do Do you still need my my staff? I, I could totally still use it as a walking stick, but appreciate that. I'll take back my walking stick. And. Uh. I will take the bowl. And I guess I'll head over to that tent so that I can gather up whatever uh, spell components and things like that that I might be able to find. Okay. Maybe a bag for those. 
Uh, so you had an over. Go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Fourteen. Um, whilst you are looking, or is it fourteen plus? It's a fourteen plus. I just don't know my plus off the top okay. of my head. Uh, fourteen plus three, so seventeen total. Okay. As you're rummaging around, and you know, looking for something, uh, like some herbs and whatnot, uh, you come across a box that has some scribbling on the side of it. Do I recognize the language it's written in? It's common. Oh, okay. Can I read the writing? Is it legible? Uh, it looks like a five-year-old did it, but it's definitely legible. Um, all things considering. You're used to reading Chicken Scratch and whatnot. Yeah. Um, the, the, the actual name itself is scribbled out. Like there's a whole word just scribbled out. Secret stash, do not touch. That's the good stuff. I'm immediately going to open it and see what's inside of it. Um, you see some components uh, of materials that are required for spells and stuff. All right. Um, I was hoping for gu- bubblegum wrappers and a toy car and <laughs> <laughs> light. Um, I will stick my head outside of the tent to see if I can locate uh, Tor or Bjorn. Okay. They're uh, busy, engaged in a conversation some distance away. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt them. <laughs> okay. I will carry the box over and ask about it. I'd be putting that back if I were you. Um, You'll have your fucking head. Who's he? Because there's some of the things in here I could use for some of the rituals he be the person that you're going to rescue <laughs> oh i'll just bring it to him then i'll be putting that back i'm pretty sure he didn't go ill equipped uh, all right then um any idea where i could get some spell components and some of the things that I need for some of the casting. From around I here, I don't really, I, we haven't really come across much. All right, I then. mean, I'm not one to tell you what to do. If it happened to go on a little adventure somewhere, then the last time I saw it, it was still in a tent. Besides, it'd be a great practical joke. <laughs> so does that mean that I have your approval to bring it to him, then? I wouldn't go far as approval. Consider me... ignorant. Meanwhile, he's making a bet with his brother behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> to see what happens to me afterwards? <laughs> Paul is kind of somewhat intrigued and slides six silver pieces in his back pocket. He's just has a gambling problem. <laughs> What's a little gambling between family? You, you then hear him. Uh, what languages do you understand? Is it back? <laughs> mm. Do you, do you understand Dwarvish? I do. I want to say yes. You're not there. 
I was actually going to say that it, uh, when I see them together, I'm going to walk up to them because I have a question. Okay. Oh, where is it? I was just waiting for a break in the commentary. Which tab is that on? I'm looking for it now. <laughs> uh, languages, you do not. It is in oh. your abilities tab. You know, Abyssal, ah. Celestial, Common, and Draconic. So you you but hear? I do have a spell. <laughs> uh, before all this goes on, you you do hear. I mean, you're not gonna know because this isn't barely just a whisper. Um, he, he says uh, a little sentence in a language that you don't understand. Um, and Jeannie, you come over to the tail end of the conversation. Mm hmm. And you only hear half the last word. So you don't really have any context. Okay. That's fine. Jeannie doesn't give any context. <laughs> Jeannie need context. <laughs> I need context. It's fine. So, Becca, you wandering off? Um. Yeah, he's going to... He's going to put the box back for the time being. As you do, uh, Paul chips up. You know, it might be an idea if you do take it to him. Beck will turn. Would you make up my mind already? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am not my son. <laughs> At this point, there's a very sly exchange of coins between the two of them. <laughs> and then Bjorn like, leans on and goes, oh, 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 in, in the same language that you can bear, that you don't understand. And he says it so quick and so quiet, it's very difficult to pick up. It's it's fine. The the materials that I need are fairly common. Um, I'll just bring him to his stuff. It'll be better that way. Jeannie's standing there waiting her turn to speak. Uh, Bjorn looks down. How can I help? How can I help get a lesson? I. Okay, first of all, I just want to thank you for the generosity of your hospitality and for lending us these things so that we can go and find your friend. But second, I had a question. Do you have an herbalist or an apothecary, a gardener, somebody I can talk plants with? He locks up and starts scratching his long ginger beard. Even his beard is Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Not that anybody can think of immediately. The person that you're going to go see and rescue, he happens to know a few things. Okay. Not sure whether or not they happen to be legal, but that's a different story. She just grins and sort of shrugs her shoulders, thinking quietly about the blue mushroom under her bed. <laughs> That's a place to put it. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, nowhere else room. to put it. Uh, Orpheus is going to notice that everyone else has bags and he doesn't. Okay. Uh, where where did you get those? Come, I'll show you. Sheet. Scamper over, take his hand, and walk him to the tent. Okay. He picks up a bag. Okay. And he puts it on. It actually expands to suit you. That's what he said. Hey. Uh, <laughs> are there any harnesses? Like leather harnesses. Like for putting battle axes in. 
No, oh, no, I don't think that's what she's after. No, that's actually exactly what I'm after. Okay, that's me thinking you're looking for something to put the goddamn halfling in. I'm like, what is this? The fucking Mandalorian? Listen. <laughs> I was oh. thinking that this suddenly went from D&D to <laughs> <laughs> entirely different kind of dungeon scenario. I mean, we, we're, we've been D&D with the side of BDSM all along, so... Mm -hmm. um, I'm not at fault. in cages. I'm just saying. You do find one. But it does say next to it, not for sale. Good thing he's not buying it. Literally the only one that put the thing back that didn't belong to him. Uh, he picks it up and he looks at it. Good attack, tries... one size fits all. And he tries it on. It's a bit of a struggle, but at, f at first, and then when it realizes, quote unquote, that it's grown something, it kind of loosens a little bit. And then when you've got it on, it tightens back up again. It makes your muscles kind of buff out a little bit more. Uh. He leans down and whispers something in Jeannie's ear. Okay. I'm going to DM it to her first. Jeannie's definitely impressed with the... Uh harness on his uh, what what does for it's like she's um quietly noticing mm -hmm. uh so when orpheus whispers in her ear she looks up at him and puts her ch hand on her chin i swear to god if you if you turn around said to just make my butt look big no no and she says i can try and then she uh he's gonna kneel down and like get on one knee and turn a little and she's gonna climb up his back and st stick her toes between his back and the harness <laughs> put her hands on his shoulders and look over the top of his shoulder yeah i, I yeah make I an athletics check <laughs> Big Hero Six. <laughs> we're only four. Oh my god. Athletics. I have. Well, this is going on. Now that I have a brazier, I'm gonna wander off to uh, what uh, works as their kitchen, mm -hmm. and uh, see about finding some herbs. And some charcoal and some things that I need for a ritual. You definitely find the charcoal. You find the charcoal in the campfires. Twelve, by the way. You stumble and you fumble, but you manage to do it. You might have a bruised kidney, but I managed to do it. <laughs> so I tell him uh, in his ear, yeah, I can see. Do I get this right now that you are literally carrying a halfling? Uh, by a backpack. Not, not necessarily. I am a mount for a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I can mount you. <laughs> uh, for the listeners, for the listeners, what what Orpheus whispered in Jeannie's ear. Hey, can you climb on the back of this thing and see over my shoulder? I give you go flat. Okay, so I climb back down again. Okay. Uh, we will ask for one after we find that guy because this isn't for sale. And then he's going to take it off and put okay. it back. Okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't know. Okay. I should probably tell you I'm afraid of heights. 
but and then he stops and thinks please tell me he remembers when i peed on his shoulder you know he stops and thinks that makes so much more sense now she blushes like from head to toe i'm so sorry i'm really tall and he looks down and ashley the player really regrets doing that <laughs> and says you're like, really not i'm really not and and i'm not used to high i'm, I'm used to i i just I don't tell the others but i'm really scared of heights what if you can't see them i mean it wasn't so so bad the last time i was on your shoulders i i don't know i will just we'll have to work on that i guess um just you should know that and she's like major twiddling her fingers and gnawing on her lip and twirling her hairs and doing all of the very awkward shy little girl things okay okay and then he reaches his hand down so that she can take his hand and they can leave the tent okay um beck as you walk past the campfire through the kitchens you do come across the charcoal uh as for um the other herbs uh, what specifically are you looking for it does not specify. It just says charcoal, incense, and herbs. If I have herbs, I can make incense out of some of the herbs. And if I have herbs, then I have herbs. Okay. Um. You definitely. You you come across some of the herbs. Like it's it's flavorings, thyme, rosemary. Oh, I've got shit. Sage. Yep. Yep. Good enough. I got herbs and I got incense then. Cool. To be fair, they already had time. They already had and too. on that fucking horrific pun. That was bad. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I've been DFG. Next time, our adventurers actually go on their first actual quest in four levels. We kind of had. We, we kind of had the quest wait does this mean we get to level to four you're already level four right oh, no three. oh then no three levels oh <laughs> had a bunch of very excited players for like <laughs> yeah i know it's great right <laughs> wait are we leveling no oh <laughs> but i've been dfg foes and all of the socials support everybody that has them feel free to subscribe to our only fans for the extra lewd portions of this podcast and trust me there's gonna be some and it probably is gonna get worse over time until then ttfn okay bye bye Ciao.